Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Kevin Rudd. I coordinated a set of senior design projects this past year that were intended to integrate systems engineering. And so I guess in a sense, what I'm going to tell you is all the things you should not do when you put together a senior design program that's new and different. So I had a, a group of a half dozen faculty and instructor colleagues who helped support this effort. We had a bunch of projects. I'll talk very quickly about them. And then we'll sort of go through what didn't work and where it really needs to go for next iteration. So just to put things into perspective, the Naval Academy is one of four military academies in the United States. It's sort of a unique location. We have approximately 4,500 students who, at the end of a four-year program, receive a Bachelor of Science degree and become commissioned officers in the Navy or the Marine Corps. So it's a very structured organization. Um, their schedules are fairly well restricted. Um, the interesting thing about it, I guess, is that even an English major or a French major gets a Bachelor of Science. So there's a, an interesting dynamic at the Naval Academy. The other aspect of the Naval Academy, which is relevant with something like a design project, is that the time is very scarce. The mantra is mental, moral, and physical. And if you think about that, that means that roughly one third of their focus is on academics, which creates some interesting conflicts time-wise. Um, even in the summer, they are committed. So we, can, we have limited time that we can actually reach out and try to bring in the students to do good work. What I'm going to talk about is our participation in Research Topic 19, which was a program supported by the Systems Engineering Research Center out of Stevens Institute. It was funded by the Assistant Secretary of Defense, Research and Engineering, to build systems engineering interest. And so in their mind, the senior design project was secondary. In ours, it was primary. Um, there's a whole list of things it was designed to do, but basically, with the world becoming more complicated and interconnected, you have to have a systems thinking. And so the goal of the program was to bring in systems thinking and get people excited about trying to look at things systematically from a, uh, all of the aspects of system engineering, documentation, requirements, specifications, validation, verification. Um, and the, the end result was to produce something which actually worked and to tell people, particularly the other participants who were doing similar programs, but also you know, colleagues in other venues, how things worked and what to do. So our participation was four projects. And I'll talk very briefly about the projects. I'm happy to talk more about them offline. We had four projects, 16 students, four majors, three departments, six faculty. It was in essence, a very complicated program for us. Um, one project was personal accountability to keep track of where people are. That's an important aspect in many environments. One was to improve the ability to operate in a remote location. You can imagine a humanitarian camp in Japan or um, other places, Thailand, Singapore, where any of these other places that have had disasters, you have few resources. So how do you maximize the capability of your systems? Um, one was to produce water as efficiently as possible. And the other was to use wave energy to create power. Um, and so we had interdisciplinary teams, two, two teams with electrical engineering and other majors, one a systems engineering, control theory, department, one naval architecture, and then the other couple were computer and electrical engineers. So the personal accountability basically used a network of wireless devices. Um, they built one server and one wireless device with scanners so you could keep track of people. So this was more of an integration effort than a design effort, but it, integration is a form of design. It's just not as hands-on. 
Um, the idea here is to just keep track of where people are so that if you had an emergency, you could find them, essentially. Surge power. Generators work most efficiently at capacity. Most generators don't operate at capacity because you have to deal with surge. So the idea here was to take a vehicle represented by just batteries, and when a group of people arrives at camp, they plug their vehicle into the grid, thereby increasing the capacity of the local grid so that any additional load they put on is in some sense mitigated, especially for surge, by themselves. So they bring their own surge capacity with them. Um, water purification, the idea here was to optimize using control systems to make it a lower power environment. And so they would analyze the source water, decide what flow path to go through, process it, test it again, and either use it or dump it based on the requirements. And so they built a system which could actually intelligently, to the scope that they designed, minimize the power consumed. And finally, wave power. In the littoral region, there is a significant amount of energy in the surf. Um, they built some models. The idea was to take this suspended generator, which would produce power through linear motion. And they built and tested a system that did that. So what, what's common across all these systems is the notion of what are the requirements, what are you going to build, and how are you going to test it when you're done. And in fact, this is an example of some of the testing they did. Mechanically moving the device and measuring the output to see how did their device work. So we had four projects, 16 students. What were the challenges? The biggest challenge was we found out about this program essentially in the summer. Student schedules were fixed, classes were designed, in some cases projects were already assigned, and so we had to scramble to figure out how to do interdisciplinary projects and integrate the systems engineering coursework. So we ended up having 16 students in probably six different classes, split between the three departments. They were on different schedules, which made doing assignments difficult, because they were all different assignments. It made getting teams together difficult, because there were very few opportunities during the week to get together. Um, an artifact of having no time to plan in advance. Systems engineering integration was also difficult, because we had no ability to really inject systems engineering into the coursework. So our solution was to go out and acquire some external systems engineering capital and have the students do that on their own as an independent study course. Um, the end result is that doing real world projects is great. I'm a big fan of competition projects, robot projects, things of that sort. They're nice constrained designs. But the interesting thing about a real world design is that it gets them excited about their design actually going somewhere and potentially doing something useful. It's, all, it's great to say, I beat everybody else in my class, but to say, I sent my design to a humanitarian relief camp and it produced water for them is very motivating. The teams actually learned a lot, the two interdisciplinary teams, because you basically had some variation on mechanical engineering with some variation on electrical engineering. And so there was some cross-pollination that doesn't normally happen in our department-centric design projects. So that was a really good thing. Having students never getting together because they're always in different classes, that's a bad thing. That's a really bad thing. It made life very difficult. And this brilliant idea to borrow systems engineering coursework and have the students do it on their own was also not a very good idea. You need to engage the students. They need to 
discuss with each other, especially something like systems engineering, which is inherently an interactive process. The systems engineer does not hide in a room doing systems engineering. The systems engineer goes everywhere to do systems engineering. And so teaching system engineering at a computer in their dorm room is just a terrible idea. So this isn't the last slide, but it is the conclusion slide. The biggest things I got out of this as coordinating the program was that real world problems really are great. The problem with them is they cost money, but they provide an opportunity that a contrived problem does not. And that does make a big difference in both the accomplishments as well as the excitement of the students. Um, it also has, real world problems also have real world requirements. Again, they're not contrived. Sometimes they're not even desirable, but they're real. It's what they're going to have to see when they go out in the real world. Um, and you need a consistent course, not just in time, but in terms of content. So everybody talks the same language. Everybody can work together. You don't have two reports saying the same thing that are different. So those were the biggest lessons learned from this. And you look at these and you go, well, I look at these and I go, well, of course, I knew that. But a year ago, we were just trying to make it work. And we didn't have a whole lot of choice. So this year, we're going to try and do it again. And we've got a couple of variations we're going to do. One is we're going to have one course. Now, this is difficult to do in the Naval Academy environment because everybody is stovepiped. We've got our little departments and things. So I also, in addition to being in electrical engineering, I also run a general engineering program. And so we're just going to change the general engineering program to include this. At least that's the vision. It's actually a new um, course, which makes it even easier because we don't have an old course that we have to change. We just have to create it with the right vision. Um, the other nice thing about general engineering is it's interdisciplinary. It has a little bit of everything in it. So that's a, a benefit as well. And the other thing we're going to do is, again, with this follow-on, was we're going to focus on a real-world problem because, again, that's where the students seem to be very excited. It's a practical thing for them to be spending their time on. And as I said at the beginning, time is a scarce commodity. And so giving them something that they believe is practically useful is very valuable. Um, and again, we're going to do the system engineering, um, trying to build a fairly large system. Our proposal is to do a self-powered water purification system so that you could conceivably just deliver it to someone. And as long as they have wind or water or some other source of power that's consistent with what the package provides and a source of water, they're good. They don't have to have generators. It all comes completely self-sustainable. Um, I guess, in a sense, renewable, because it doesn't have um, a fossil fuel supply. The intent is that it will be wind power or wave power or stream power, depending on what the students decide to build to. And so hopefully, our lessons learned from this are going to be built not only into next year's program, but also into the general engineering program going forward. So that was our experience, and I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have on why we had such a uh, complicated experience doing something which realistically seems like it should be so simple. Do we have recovered some time? Or is there any question? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, there were different uh, cultures from the different departments. Uh, did you run into that problem? And how did you um, well, I would, I would say that in, in a sense we ran into the same problem, except that for us, the, individual, the students were in the department courses. So an electrical engineer was in the electrical engineering course. The weapon systems engineer was in the weapon systems course. The naval architect was in the naval architect course. So it was an issue 
because they were all working sort of on multiple things with different schedules, but they were being graded by their own standards. And so that meant that two people on the same team were being graded to different <coughs> standards in the first part of this sequence. In the end, they were all on one project. And so for the second half of the course, they had one of the people on the first slide grading them as a group. And so in the second half, we had no conflict at all because everybody was essentially in the same group. That's mostly true, um, but that's sort of the solution that we came up with last time. Next time, it will be better because there will be just one course. But yeah, that's a, that's a real problem, assessment across different groups. Right. Is it an open-ended design? Like how, what's the reaction to that? I guess resistance would be probably the, the, the simplest way to say it. Um, that was another reason that moved me to do the web-based system engineering course, because none of the departments wanted to include that information. We already have our course. We're not going to change it. Just because you're bringing in projects and funding, that's not our problem. And I think that's pretty typical. I've seen that before. Uh, another reason that I'm focusing on general engineering, that's something that I control. That's something that is very um, single, so I only have to deal with one thing. Um, and so changing things, there's a lot of inertia in my experience in academia. And adding something new, even if it's better, maybe it isn't. It's difficult, and we tried to do this in a month. It really takes years to sort of move this into a curriculum, and hopefully by starting fresh, we'll at least be able to start going the right direction. But yes, from the faculty perspective, it's very difficult to have faculty change what they're doing, adapt to things. Thank you very much. Yeah. So we have, we have to proceed.